Okay, so in, in this question, uh, question, we're asked to find the area captured between two curves. The question actually reads this way. It says, find the area enclosed. And when we see enclosed, we have to realize that we're being asked to be captured by, to be captured by y equals sine of x and y equals cosine of x on the interval 0 to 2 pi. It is important in this case that we have an interval because this is a periodic, uh, these are periodic functions, right? And they're, so this thing is, these things are going to happen over and over again. It's going to happen out here again. It's going to happen over here. It happened back here somewhere. So we're looking for where is, is there a capture here? And the capture is from here to here, I think, isn't it? Right? Is, if we go from here to here, there's an area that is captured there. So what we have to figure out is where is the intersection? So where is the intersection of these two curves? That's where. Where do the functions intersect? And I, maybe the answer is not intuitive to you. However, if we just go to the unit circle, go to the unit circle and check that out and ask yourself this, right, this is, this x and y value is the same, but remember that when we look at trigonometric functions, the x value is cosine x and the y value is sine x. So if you go to the unit circle and look in quadrant, start in quadrant 1 because it's from 0 to 2 pi, where do any of them have the same cosine and sine values? And they do. And if you look on your unit circle, you would see, and this is something we have to have memorized at least at least the first quadrant of the unit circle, and we'll talk in class about why you only really have to memorize the first, uh, the first quadrant of the unit circle. So this value is pi force, and if you go to pi force, you'll find out that pi force has cosine value of square root two over two, comma square root, uh, and sine value square root two over two, and they are the same. So this is what I did. I was here. And I looked at pi force, and as I looked at pi force, I saw, you know what? At pi force, the cosine value is square root 2 over 2, and the sine value is square root 2 over 2, right? And then what I did was, right, this is positive, positive, this is positive, negative. These can't have the same values because one of them is going to be negative, one of them is going to be positive, right? I'm just using um, the rules here. This is Quadrant one is positive, positive quadrant. This is negative, positive quadrant. So they can't be the same. They could be opposites, but they can't be the same. Here, this is the negative, negative. So that's possible. So this is what I did. This is my reasoning here is I just said, you know what? 180 degrees from here, we're going to have this, we're going to have this, this angular value here. Well, 180 degrees is, 180 degrees is pi. So if you add pi to pi force, remember, so I'm adding pi plus pi force. You're asking me why? Because I'm starting here and I'm going 180 degrees, and this is 180 degrees. So I'm just going to rewrite this as 4 pi over pi plus pi force is equal to 5 pi force. <coughs> right? So this is 5 pi force. The angular value here is 5 pi force. And these are going to have the exact opposite cosine and sine values. So this one is positive square root 2 over 2. This is going to be negative square root 2 over 2. And the y value, the, co the sine value, is also going to be a negative. So it's going to be negative square root 2 over 2. And I'm checking because I want to know when are these the same. So here they're the same. This is these two, so I know that happens here because that's when cosine and sine are the same. And at 5 pi force, I know also that they're the same, so this angular value right here, this angular value right there is, sorry, is 5 pi force, so 5 pi force, right? So we talk about what about on the rest of the interval because the interval, it says the interval is from 0 to 2 to 2 pi, there's no other area enclosed, captured, there's another area captured there, right? This area is not enclosed, it's not captured, and nor is it captured over here. This is the capture point, isn't it? Okay, so that gets us there. 
from there, I think it gets relatively simple. Uh, here's one, one thing you want to, another thing you really want to be thinking about is which on the on the interval you're talking about, which one, which um, which part of the graph is higher, has greater height? And isn't it true that sine on the interval that we're looking at, sine is always higher than cosine? So tells me that we want this. We want the definite integral from 0 to 2 pi, we're going to change that in a second, of sine x, the higher one, minus cosine x, the lower one, dx. Right? Here, after I do a little analysis, I realize that I'm looking for a place that was captured in here, in this interval, and that place that was captured was actually pi fourths to 5 pi fourths, so I can rewrite this because the other parts aren't captured. So pi fourths to 5 pi fourths. From there, we're just going to keep moving on here. We'll keep moving on, here. and we can integrate this now. Uh, again, we have to have memorized the integration rules, but the integral of sine is opposite cosine. So I'm going to what we do here is now I'm going to integrate, I'm going to integrate here. And I'm going to say this is equal to the integral of sine of x is opposite cosine x, isn't it? This minus sine right here is this one. The integral of cosine of x is sine. Whoops, I'm going to switch six. Is sine of x, isn't it? Is sine of x as evaluated from pi fourths to five pi fourths. Right? From here, it really gets e um, easy. I mean, this was the hard part, is figuring out where does this thing, where is the capture point? And I think we found that fine. So we have that. From here, we're just going to use the fundamental theorem of calculus, which suggests to us that we have f of b minus f of a is equal to the area. And then we're just going to start filling that in. So we have actually f of 5 pi fourths minus f of pi fourths. And we already know these values. This is not going to be very tricky for us. It's going to be a little bit um, consuming. So I'm going to set up this part first. Put this part up in pink, I guess. This part first would be opposite cosine 5 pi fourths minus sine of 5 pi fourths. This negative sign right here is this negative sign. And if you don't mind, I'll do this one in yellow. And that would give us, this whole thing goes in brackets, right? Opposite cosine pi fourths minus sine pi fourths, right? <clears throat> So we have opposite. What is cosine of 5 pi fourths? It is negative square root 2 over 2, isn't it? This minus sine is this one minus. Sine of 5 pi fourths is negative here, isn't it? You can distribute this if you want to, which would give us plus cosine of pi fourths is 2. Remember I distributed this to here and to here. So plus sine of this value is also a 2, isn't it? So now we're just really digging through this math. This negative times a negative is a positive, so that gives us negative times a negative is a positive. We just carry this math out. we got a bunch of these things, don't we? We have one, two, one, two, three, four of them. So equals four square root twos over two. <clears throat> they have common denominators, so we don't have to do anything with that. Two. This simplifies to two square roots of two equals the area. All right. So I think um, to be careful for the wording. That's kind of been my lesson. Uh, this question was worded a little bit differently than. Than I've seen them word in the past, but this is a problem right out of the AP 
workbook, so I'm assuming if they're writing it this way, that on the AP exam it will be written that way also, so we need to make sure we're speaking their language. So there we go. This could also be done really, really easily on your calculator. I did another <clears throat> demonstration of how to do that on another calculator. I'll probably do this one too. So there's that. Please look for the video of uh, finding the enclosed area uh, using your TI-CAS. So, all right, you guys, good work. Good work, good work, good work.